Hello all and welcome to the Periscope podcast where we discuss all things CHS. Sit down and get comfortable as you join us for this episode of Why I Love, where we discuss what we're currently loving. So welcome everyone to the Why I Love Periscope podcast. I'm your host, Jared Wilson. I'm a senior here at Carlisle High School. Doing most of the interviewing today is... I'm Justice Chris Connor, ninth grader, and I'll be interviewing a senior, Brandon, today about cars because I know that is one of his passions that he talks about a lot. Brandon, welcome to the show. Hello. It's a pleasure to be on. So first off, let's get to know you by your favorite topic, cars. What do you currently drive? Uh, well, right now I'm driving... A 1998 uh, Lincoln Mark 8. So, what got you into working with cars? Hmm, well, I'd say it probably have to be my dad. I grew up with projects always in the garage, something or another. I remember being about five years old and him buying a 1968 Chevelle, and I watched him restore that when I was through about six, seven, eight. And from there, I saw him acquire other projects and eventually. I started helping more and more and about uh, seventh grade I wanted my own project so one came more <laughs> and here I am. What would you say is your favorite decade for cars and why? Mm-hmm. What cars put that as your favorite decade? Uh, let's see I would honestly say personal favorite would have to be well two decades 60s for post-war and 30s for pre-war. 60s in particular I like the variations in styling. So we have end of atomic age, beginning of space age, or the span of space age, and the beginning of neoclassical. So styling wise, there's a wide variety. And as for powertrain, there's also a greater range. We have a greater spread of um, European makes into the global market. So you have varieties, you have a Jaguar making a big footing, and Mercedes Benz making their first footing into the uh, American uh, market, as well as uh, the American makes, uh, continuing to and out, try to out innovate each other. So it produces quite a few different products. I think they're all very interesting. Personally, I think the 80s are iconic. What do you think is the most iconic decade for restoring cars? That changes. So right now, we're looking at an interesting transition where we're getting the first post malaise era, so first post 70s oil crisis vehicles and smog uh, regulation vehicles hit, you know, collectability, major collectability. So now all of a sudden, we have these cars that were written off as worthless for the past several decades as starting to get significant value. So as it usually goes, convertibles, then coupes, and then sedans and wagons follow the chain of desirability. So coupes are always the most desirable, and they're always the most desirable first. Uh, This starts, you know, from the beginning of collectible automobiles to current day. So that, in addition to the fact that it's always varying. So 10 years ago, it was early 70s muscle cars, coupes, say your 70 GTOs, for example. Now it's getting a little older, you know, so we're starting to see some later models, Corvette, you know, 78, 79 Corvette, starting to see them go up in value, for example. And with um, websites like um, Cars and Bids, we're seeing newer enthusiast cars, 80s, 90s cars now also take big prices. So current desirability, I'd say we're going to see more and more 80s cars make record prices as the decade moves through, but it'll keep changing. So what is your dream car and what makes it special to you? Ooh, that's a very difficult one. Um, I have a lot of dream cars. I like, There's so many I just love and I'd love to have. Uh, but let's see. First, one of the first ones that comes to mind, especially for automobiles, is uh, the Cord 810, 812. I just think they're really cool. Uh, they're front wheel drive and they have very iconic styling. They are let me think how do i describe this they're they have so they have highway headlights if you haven't seen them and they have like this coffin shaped nose and then the grill kind of wraps around the side of the car and it's, it's a really neat look and um i just love how art deco it is i love the styling um i think that i just love to drive one i think it'd be awesome it's a lot of like nice machine work and um yeah so that'd be my one of my big picks and then let's see another one. I really like the 66 Oldsmobile Toronado, which actually now that I think about it is 
style after the chord 8, 10, 8, 12. But that has a whole bunch of different elements itself. Um, I really like for that, the interior is really cool. It has a barrel type speedometer. So instead of like the needle spin turning, the needle stay, stays put and then numbers turn behind it. And that's the one thing I really like about it. Um, plus it, that is also front wheel drive. So it has a perfectly flat floor that has no like fender. Line. It's all one body shape. And then there are just fender flares from that. And that's where the wheels sit. And it's got, uh, also has hideaway headlights. It has a sloped front end with like bladed fenders. And it's just the coolest design, I think. And another one, this is, uh, the, uh, Citroen, uh, uh, SM, which is also, it's a coupe, front wheel drive as well, I guess, now that I think about this. And it has all kinds of cool Citroen uh, technology. It has load leveling, hydrogen pneumatic suspension, so it always stays level. And it has uh, auto return steering wheel, so you turn the wheel and it returns itself for you. And it has no brake pedal, just a button on the floor. And uh, it's, very, it's very weird. The headlights turn with the wheels. It's just so quirky and out there. I, I that's why I like it. I like odd stuff, oddball stuff, stuff that's unique, stuff I've never seen before. So yeah. Oh, so what what car manufacturers your favorite of their inventory? What cars do you think are their best and their worst? Ooh, that's difficult. See, I owned several different makes and models, so I haven't really been able to pick a definitive favorite yet. Uh most people settle down on one, like, okay, I'm just going to work on this one car. It's a one make and model, this one year. That sort of thing. I have not gotten to that point yet. I'm still all over the place, every decade, every make and model, pretty much. Um, I'd say for like inventory, current inventory, that's another difficult one. I feel like Ford's current Bronco is for the current market, a big one, but I'd say my favorite, if we're talking just SUVs here, I'd say my favorite would have to be the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. I'm a little partial to Jeeps, but I will say that model currently and as a long-term nameplate is probably one of the most iconic cars and one of their best vehicles because they've produced that from about, well, produced from 62 through 91 and then now currently again. I'd say that would be one of the most iconic cars, at least American. Uh, there are so many to count. Um, so what's your favorite engine and why? Ooh, favorite engine? Well, I'd say I have the most experience myself with inline sixes and V8s. So I'd have to say one or the other. As for engine manufacturer, that's just as difficult of a question. Chevrolet engines are so easy to work on and so abundant that it's kind of foolproof if you want a V8 that you go for one. But I feel like other makes, say uh, a Buick or an uh, Oldsmobile engine, same displacement V8, have just as many advantages. Particularly, Oldsmobile has, you know, a very shallow head angle. So the, the valves have a very shallow angle. So it's a very efficient combustion. So they were the last V8 to make it to 91 without, I believe, yeah, 91 without any, and still pass emissions without fuel injection, with still a carburetor. Uh, so that's another one that's really interesting. Um, for my inline sixes, uh, the AMC inline six, that's a very interesting engine that has very interesting history. That's been put in everything. Uh, and later it was updated and put into the Jeeps, the Jeep XJs. And that's a very nice engine, very reliable. I have a Jeep XJ, it doesn't have the inline six, but my mom had a Jeep XJ Cherokee with the inline six. That was a good engine. Let's see, other engines. Uh, there's so many. I mean, a lot. Uh, <laughs> the Mercedes-Benz line of inline sixes has always been very robust. My Mercedes has 2.2 liter inline six, and it's got 150,000 miles, and it's 55 years old, I think, now, and it's still going strong despite the rest of the car. <laughs> so that's another nice, interesting design. Not only like reliability and like performance interests me, but also like engineering and that kind of stuff. So what are your favorite car mods? Mods, okay, well, I'd say one of the easiest, typically one of the most effective for the money would probably be a cold intake, depending on the model, make, model, engine, fueled, carburetor versus fuel injection, for example. A colder intake can give you, you know, as much as, say, 15 horsepower boost, and most of the time it's just as simple as running, like, a tube from the intake, the snorkel, or the uh, 
intake box and running it into the fender where it's receiving cold air, not from the engine bay, is a very good one. I would recommend that for depending on your vehicle. That would be a top one. My favorite mod that I'd like to do <laughs> is to wire in USB charge ports through the cigarette lighter. That one has been the most useful. I also, in my 87 Chrysler, wired in a Bluetooth receiver into the back of the stereo. <laughs> And that was nice. Um, so those would have to be, be my top ones. Um, so, yeah. So I know you work with a lot with older cars, but what would you, what would be your favorite car being made today? My favorite car being made today. That's a difficult one because hmm, I don't look too much at, I, I do, but I'm always looking a lot more at the older ones. My favorite current vehicle, I, 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 I'm again, I'm a little partial to Jeeps, so I do like the Jeep lineup, although I still like the Challengers too, so the Challengers are nice. One that I kind of like, I think is really cool, just because of what it is, it's kind of like a rarity in the market anymore, and that'd be like the Subaru BRZ, just because it's like the last affordable, like, sporty coupe, sport coupe. So yeah, that would probably be my top picks for current cars. If I were to buy a new car, it'd probably be one of those. So what car do you think is very iconic and why? Who iconic. That's an interesting one. So there are, I was just thinking about the Jaguar E-Type. That's a very iconic car, very famous design. So that I'd say as in like 20th century vehicle designs, that'd probably be a big one. Um, let's see, iconic again. Jeeps are very iconic. Your CJs all through, up through your Wranglers. I mean, anyone can identify a Jeep pretty much. Other than that, the Mustang, of course. I mean, everyone, I feel, knows a Mustang, whether it's, you know, first gen, third gen, or uh, current generation. So what are your plans for the future, both including and not necessarily including car restoration? Well, actually, I am going to school for automotive restoration. There is a school in Kansas, McPherson College, and they have a bachelor's degree in automotive restoration. So I have enrolled there. I'll be moving out there in, the, in August. So I'm looking forward to that. So four years out there, it'll be very fun. I'll be learning all the techniques, paint, body work, machine work, woodwork, trim, upholstery, electrical, all that, every aspect of a vehicle. So, which is what I want, wanted to do. I wanted to learn as much as I could about every aspect of the process. I want to be able to do it all, you know, know it all as, as far as how it's done. I want to be able to do it all myself. And I eventually like to own my own business. So I will be taking uh, a basically a minor, my focus, my secondary focus to the degree will be management, business management. So I would like to own my own business, but there is a lot I can do with that degree outside of owning my own business. I can um, do insurance. Uh, so praise cars. Um, I will be able to also judge cars at shows. I can procure cars for people. I can restore them for other people, like work within a business, as well as curate collections, private um, museum collections, that kind of thing. So there's a lot I can do, and I'm really excited about it. Um, very ready to go and learn all this stuff. So if you could leave us with one tip about car maintenance, what would it be? Oh, let's see. Car maintenance. I would say... Definitely check your tire pressure because you will notice a difference if your tires are low and you fill them up again. Plus, you do not want that uneven tread wear because that messes everything up. And then you got one tire worn down weird. And so that one is a big one. And I'd also say, well, with current cars, there's, they have so many, you know, check systems, sensors. It's, they're pretty much uh, idiot proof, I'd say. But for older ones, definitely check the oil and the coolant levels. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Brandon. Great job. You're John. welcome. Thank you for everyone for listening and we'll talk to you next time. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Periscope podcast. Please keep in mind the discussion in our podcast reflects the opinions or views of the hosts and guests, not the current Periscope staff, CHS administration, or the CHS student body. Follow us on all platforms at CHS Periscope and visit our website, chsperiscope.com, for more.